What happens when U.S. Navy fighter pilots miss the landing on an aircraft carrier? United States naval aviators are considered to be some of the most well-trained and skilled pilots in the world. They regularly break the speed of sound, pull G's, and seemingly defy gravity while performing risky maneuvers defending the country. Not only does it take years of dedicated training to be able to fly the multi-million dollar aircraft in combat, it takes guts. Perhaps the most notable thing that separates naval aviators from other military aviators and civilian pilots around the world is the fact that they have to learn to land on a moving ship. Typically, planes will land on runways on the shore that are about 200 to 300 feet wide and nearly two miles long. However, on an aircraft carrier at sea, runways are only a mere 300 feet in length. Yep, that's right. The runway on an aircraft carrier is only about as long as a normal runway is wide. So, with that in mind, how is it even possible to land on an aircraft carrier? Landing on an aircraft carrier is an art made possible with lots of specialized equipment and coordinated actions between flight crew and air crew. Air traffic controllers aboard the carrier will initially guide the pilots in toward the ship. Pilots will then fly off of a series of lights, often referred to as the meatball or simply the ball, to guide them the rest of the way home to make their landing. The ball typically refers to the optical landing system. This is a system of lights that provides glide scope information to the pilot as they come in to land on the carrier. Vertical lights indicate a pilot's altitude and horizontal lights called datum lights give a reference for the pilot to judge their positioning off of. This lighting system makes it possible for pilots to fly back from missions and land aboard the carrier even in the vast darkness of the ocean in the dead of the night. A series of crew members work on deck to guide the pilot in as well as give them landing clearance. Some of the more senior flight deck crew, like the landing signal officers, are qualified pilots themselves and can assist the pilot as they come in for a landing. They communicate messages to the air crew by signaling with different colored lights. The pilot will ultimately land on the aircraft carrier by utilizing the tail hook on their aircraft to hook the arresting gear secured to the flight deck. Similar to shore operations, the pilot will lower landing gear as they prepare to land. However, when approaching the carrier, they will additionally lower their tail hook. There are commonly four arresting cables or wires rigged across the runway of the aircraft carrier. Pilots usually aim to touch down and catch the third wire with their tail hook. Although it seems odd to surpass the first two wires, this is actually the safest wire to shoot for, as they have another wire beyond if they miss the three wire land too far down the runway. They also have room behind them if they land slightly short of their intended touchdown point and can catch the first or second wire. When the pilot hooks the steel wire with his tail hook, energy is transferred to hydraulic systems below the flight deck. The wire essentially pulls back on the aircraft to slow it down and bring it to a stop. Clearly, pilots must execute an approach and landing to near-perfect perfection in order to successfully make a successful arrestment on the aircraft carrier deck. So this begs the question, what happens when things go wrong? There are typically two main factors that could cause a pilot to miss the landing on an aircraft carrier, human error and environmental factors. Poor weather conditions like low visibility or strong crosswinds can make it difficult for pilots to execute a proper landing, even on the shore. Add in a rocking deck on rough seas and it's easy to imagine how difficult this task can actually be. If pilots land short of the runway, they face tragic consequences. They could end up short of the ship and crash into the water or the ship itself. If a pilot makes it to the flight deck but misses the arresting wires completely, they will bolter. In a split second, the pilot will immediately increase the throttle to maximum speed and perform a go-around to reattempt the landing. In order to have enough power for the bolter maneuver, pilots set maximum power during all landing attempts until they are sure they have engaged the arresting gear and then reduce the throttle to idle after they have felt the aircraft carrier catch the gear. Between these procedures and innovations like the angled flight deck, it makes it possible for pilots to avoid deadly consequences if they simply miss the arresting gear. However, 
If the arresting gear breaks during a landing on the carrier, the consequences can be deadly. If an arresting wire breaks, the aircraft that was once landing will suddenly be barreling down the runway. Pilots only have a few seconds to regain control of their aircraft and bolter, or they could run off the edge of the runway and the aircraft could plummet into the ocean below. Broken arresting cables can also be extremely hazardous to the crew on the flight deck. The cables are about an inch and a half thick in diameter. If one snaps like a rubber band and flies around freely, not only can it destroy equipment, but it can severely injure or even kill sailors working on the flight deck. This is only one of the many reasons why the flight deck of an aircraft carrier is considered to be one of the most dangerous places to work in the world. In the event that a normal arrested landing cannot be made, the carrier does have one last option for an emergency landing, the barricade. If it comes down to this, pilots have a serious decision to make. They can either eject or attempt to land in the crash barricades rigged on the flight deck. Flight deck crews regularly practice setting up the barricades, but hope to not have to use it in a real-life scenario, as it is typically used to recover aircraft that are broken in some way and are unable to make a normal arrested landing. However, the crews are efficient and are able to set up the system in under three minutes. The barricade is about 20 feet tall, has a webbed net-like structure, and is stretched across the width of the runway. The webbed material is essentially designed to catch the aircraft and transfer the energy through the webbing down into the arresting engine. The plane will land just short of the barricade with the hopes that it will catch the aircraft and slow it to a stop before running off the end of the runway and falling into the sea. It isn't common for naval fighter pilots to miss the landing on the carrier. They are highly trained and have made hundreds, if not thousands, of landings under various conditions. At the same time, it is probably hard to find a pilot who has not had to bolter at least once in their career. However, you can be sure that the bolter procedures are practiced extensively. So if a real-life situation requiring one does occur, it will go smoothly. But what if it doesn't? What if the worst happens and the aircraft goes overboard? What happens when fighter pilots have no option but to eject from the jet? If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and leave a like or a comment. Until next time.